I'm going to now play the video from the Minicubator team. Um, a number of that, that team is here. I'm not sure uh, who is the spokesperson for that team, but they sent in a video and some of them are in the room here. We are Minicubator and we are here to promote reliable and robust water contamination testing. 3.4 million people died in 2019 due to waterborne illnesses, making it a worldwide leading cause of death. Cholera alone causes more than 91,000 preventable deaths annually. Most of these deaths are in low resource settings where clean water is not available. Furthermore, additional waterborne illnesses such as typhoid fever and bacterial dysentery compound the issue and contribute to an ongoing crisis with regards to clean water access. People in low resource settings often do not have access to clean water due to lack of infrastructure that would otherwise provide it in a manner reliably free of the fecal contamination responsible for such diarrheal diseases. This lack of infrastructure leads to inconsistent water quality depending on the location. For example, a river may have clean water upstream, but due to contamination at a certain point along the river, all of the water downstream may not be safe to use. Additionally, water that resides within reservoirs or wells may become contaminated through natural disasters or prolonged usage. With these dangers in mind, volunteers and construction workers who aid in the installation of new water sources must first test the water to ensure that it is safe to use prior to providing it to low resource communities. To conduct environmental surveillance to identify fecal contamination within water sources, water must be tested for E. coli and other coliform bacteria which serve as general indicators for the presence of more virulent bacteria associated with diarrheal diseases. Currently, petrofilms are already in use for testing water and can test for the presence of E. coli. Petrofilms are cheap, highly reliable, and easy to use, allowing researchers to monitor water for low resource communities that are prone to contamination and check whether purified or sample water is safe to use. For testing, the petrofilm with the water sample has to be incubated at body temperature for 48 hours to allow for any bacteria present within the sample to proliferate and trigger a change within the petrofilm media and thus provide accurate results. So, how do we incubate these samples? Ideally, we would transfer the sample water to a petrofilm and place it immediately, within two hours, into a lab incubator on site. Unfortunately, collection sites in low resource areas often do not have labs nearby nor have a reliable power grid to sustain an incubator up to 48 hours. Thus, the immediate usage of petrofilms within a controlled laboratory environment is limited by accessibility issues. Due to this, samples need to be collected into a vessel and transported to a lab with an incubator. However, sample collection sites are often more than eight hours away from laboratories, exceeding the EPA recommended holding time for sample reliability. Time taken between the sample collection and the sample testing may result in unintentional serialization of the collected water samples through UV or heat exposure, and test results from these stored samples may inaccurately deem contaminated water as safe. To provide accurate assessment of water quality, there is a need to develop a portable incubator that will allow researchers to incubate the sample immediately on site. To solve this problem, we have worked on the mini incubator since fall of 2020. This is what we have achieved. We currently have three potential CAD designs for the housing of the miniature incubator. Shown here are the designs along with how they open. After a selection process, we chose a hinge door box, a thermos, and a drawer housing and opening design. Along with designing the potential housings, we also calculated the insulation required through mathematical modeling of conduction-based heat loss. To accomplish this, we constructed two models, with one having a box or rectangular prism shape and the other having a cylindrical shape. Our previous model calculations have informed us that only one 100 watt hour battery is sufficient to power our device. To ensure reliability, we'll use two of these batteries to power our device. The diagram on the right shows the form factor of the device and of the battery compared to the dimensions of the armadillo, which is a previous incubator design that we are using as a reference. We are currently developing the electro electrical components individually and ensuring each component is functional before combining into a single device system. The heat component of our device can reach 35.6 degrees Celsius, and our temperature measurement component accurately measures room temperature to within plus or minus two degrees, as recorded by an external thermometer. The photos on the right show the temperature of our heating pad and the display. The current iteration of our display shows correct temperature readings, test viability, and if a test has been a success or has failed. 
The code for the device can currently set temperature control, publish current temperature to the OLED and serial monitor, and graph with data points of temperature at a 10 minute frequency. At Minicubator, our mission is to improve on-site water contamination testing by providing an improved, portable, and robust incubator to field researchers, preventing the onset of waterborne diseases in low resource settings. Thank you all for listening to this presentation. If you have any questions or comments, So let's hear it for the Minicubator team. Um, I, I know Corey Pan of Rice University is here to answer questions. There may be other members of that team, uh, but I can't see all of the participants. Um, uh, I assume you could chat to him here if you have any specific questions, and I'm sure they'd be happy to answer questions afterwards. Um, their effort is parallel to the Moonrat effort. Um, and so there's some overlap uh, there, which I don't necessarily consider a bad thing. Sometimes it's good to have two teams working on something. Uh, we're also trying to increase cooperation between those two teams. That's the nice thing about open source. It's completely reasonable to do that. 